Uh, this is your fifth year as the head women's basketball coach at NAU, and the, the turnaround for the program has been kind of interesting to look at. So just from your perspective, five years gone by, you know, what's it been like down in Flagstaff? Yeah, time flies. Um, it seems like I just got on campus yesterday, but, you know, the last five years has been amazing. Um, we took over a program that obviously had not been um, very successful for probably over a decade. Um, so we, we knew we had our work cut out for us. Um, came in, really recruited hard, um, and we just wanted to get to a place where we were a contender in the big sky. And fortunately, you know, for us, we have uh, slowly progressed and gotten there. When you look back, kind of that first year, mm -hmm. biggest eye opener when you got there, and you know, what was it like taking over a program that needed a little bit of an overhaul? Um, you know, it, it was definitely eye opening. Um, the returners that we had didn't have a ton of experience, um, and a whole bunch of kids had either graduated or left prior to us arriving. So I think we had six returners. Three of them had uh, played any minutes on a Division One court, and then we had six freshmen that, that the previous staff had signed. Um, so it was a little bit daunting, you know, obviously at first to kind of figure out, all right, which direction do we need to go? What do we have? Um, and then we really just hit the hit the ground running with recruiting, and we knew that you know, eventually uh, those recruiting players that fit our system would, would be able to play. You know, those first couple of years, you know, you mentioned like kind of that recruiting. I imagine like the development aspect was really important as well. So when did you notice maybe some changes? And, you know, that second, third year, you saw the changes in the, you know, the wins pile up a little bit more. Yeah, um, you know, player development is a, a major um, core value for us in our program. And we just want to make sure that players, when they arrive, they're not the same player when they leave. And so we really focus on a lot of individual development. And I, and I think you can see that with Kai and Lauren, who were there as freshmen, you know, the, the first year that we got there, just to see how far they've grown from their freshman year production to now their fifth year senior production. Um, it's, you know, it's pretty spectacular just to, to see their development on and off the court. Uh, we just needed players to come in to elevate our talent. And kind of to that point, really, you know, that, that 2020 tournament, the ill-fated 2020 <laughs> tournament, was, you know, your team, you know, upset the Lady Grizz, and, you know, it was kind of like a statement victory in that in that moment, you know, like that. Did you feel it in that, that, that moment, you know, as your third year in the, as the head coach of the program? Yeah, um, I think that was really the turning point, and, you know, we, we were really excited. We had everyone returning for the following year. Um, unfortunately, with COVID hitting, you know, we, we had a, a couple opt-out, and then we had a couple injuries, so it kind of... Um, skewed our returning expectation a little bit, but we still were able to obviously have a pretty good year last year. Um, and we're just continuing to build and, and trying to get better. We're trying to get a consistent winning program um, established there. And this year, you know, four seed, you know, coming in, you know, the, the team started off pretty well in conference play and like, you know, middle middle of the season, you know, maybe had some bumps there here and there, but you know, coming in as a four seed, you know, what does that mean even to have that first round bye? It's huge. You know, having that first round bye puts you in a great position to where if you can put together three really great games, you have a chance to win. Um, you know, but for us, I think this year it was almost more difficult than last year, I think. Um, just with everything opening back up and, you know, I think last year everyone kind of got used to a little bit being in the bubble and having a very structured um, routine and protocol and I think with protocols being a little bit different this year, it was challenging, you know. There was a couple shutdowns that we had um, where two or three players were out going through protocols and I, I think the last time we were fully healthy was right before Christmas. And then we had about a month and a half where we had at least one to two key players missing for every game. So, you know, I think having the majority of them back um, for the second part of February was obviously very telling um, in the, the results of those games. And we're just excited, hopefully, to, to stay healthy here and go out and put three games together. And to navigate, you know, those protocols, because that's a great point. You know, obviously Omicron spiked everything kind of in those first couple of months. So as the team kind of weathered that storm a little bit, I mean, how challenging was that, you know, compared to, you know, what all of last year was like? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, I, I think it was just uh, no one knew what to expect. And where last year, not that we really knew what to expect, but we kind of knew at least um, everything was very strict. And so I think as people started to open up in different areas, um, it was just tough, you know, and then how contagious Omicron was. If, if it hit one person, it was probably going to wipe out at least a quarter or a half of your team. Um, so it was just tough. It was tough to navigate. Um, I think it took a major toll on student athlete mental health, coaches' mental health. You know, I, I think those things that people don't talk about as much. Um, it, it was a very challenging year, but I, I'm glad we're kind of on the other side of it, and there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, that mental health aspect, too, is interesting, too, because, you know, obviously from a court coaching standpoint, you know, you have to kind of navigate that. The players are getting used to, like, what you said, kind of like a new normal, you know, after last year and everything. So um, what was that like? You know, how did, you know, you and your coaching staff kind of navigate that to help these girls as they got ready for the tournament? Yeah, I think we learned a lot of how to be flexible in, uh, in COVID and just kind of go with the flow and the things that the very last minute, I mean, you could be headed to practice and get a phone call that you had to halt for the day. 
Um, you know, so I think we just learn to, to be very flexible, be able to adjust, um, be willing to, to make adjustments at the last minute. Um, but it's tough. You know, you had student athletes and students back on campus, which, you know, you want your student athletes to be regular students and get to experience the college, um, what college is about, but it's also with precaution. And so I think they, they had a little bit of challenge um, as all student athletes across the country, just navigating what being a normal college student, but also being cautious because it could shut down yourself or your team and um, limit you from being able to play. And, you know, did you ever have that moment, like you mentioned, you get your whole team back, finally you said kind of on the other side of things, like was it that moment where you were like, finally, like this is the type of basketball that we can play when you're, you know, aren't, the odds aren't stacked against you. Is that like last few weeks, is that more indicative of all that? Yeah, I think so. You know, it, it was really probably about three weeks ago that, that we finally, I think, kind of turned the corner and we were really excited to have everyone back and uh, just being able to actually have a couple practices because I think January with some of the reschedules, I think we went two weeks with only having one practice because of all the games. So it was nice to be able to just get that work in to really try to um, sharpen some things up heading into the end of the season. So Lori, just to kind of, you know, rewind a little bit too. So, you know, uh, last I checked, Havers population is about 10,000 people. So, uh, you know, you went on to obviously have that great career at Washington. You know, one of the best prep players who came from Montana. Now you're a head coach at a Division One school. So, um, you know, do you carry kind of that small town pride with you, knowing like you came from a place that, you know, definitely not a lot of people have heard of, but, you know, look at where you're at right now. Yeah, I do. You know, it's um, Montana's a great place to be from. Uh, it's a great place to go back and visit family. Um, it's just, it's something that definitely stays with me. I love going back playing at Montana, Montana State. It's just a fun environment because you just see so many people that you knew or went to high school with or, you know, cross paths with at some point um, in sport. This sport really brings everything together. So it's definitely a, a pride point for me and it's awesome that I get an opportunity to come back to the state, you know, at least once a year to be able to play and, and see family and friends. Well, and so when you go to a place like Washington from Haver, you know, after the career you had, I mean, what was that like, that adjustment at in Seattle? And, you know, do you remember kind of what that was like as you built, you know, your career with the Huskies? Oh, absolutely. It was, I was in shock. You know, I, I think um, my high school was like 150 kids graduated in my graduating class. And I think my first class at UW had like 800 students in it. So um, it was definitely, you know, uh, the athletic community helped create that smaller, um, smaller environment, but um, it was it was a lot, you know. I think UW had four times the population of ever, so you know, it, just a lot of people. Um, but it was awesome. I love my time there. I love Seattle. I love the Northwest. So it was definitely a great experience for me. When you were looking, you know, to like go around, like what made you choose like a place like UW and made you, you know, I because I imagine the Cats and Grizz were after you as well. But you know, to like get a chance to go out and experience someplace bigger, like that's kind of a, a leap of faith. I feel like at that point, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I felt like it was the the closest. Um, you know, at that time, Pac-10. I just aged myself, but uh, the closest Power Five school that you know had had success. Um, it was a place where my family could get to um, if needed, and they came out and watched a lot of games. It was a, a decent drive. You know, I think 10 to 12 hours from Montana over there um, and just an opportunity to play at the highest level um, was something that I, I really wanted to do. And what made you I guess ultimately want to go into coaching you know after uh, you know I imagine basketball just being such a big part of your life uh, you know what kind of led you to want to follow the coaching path? Um, you know I, I got an opportunity early after I graduated from UW to go and be a, a graduate assistant and then I've just kind of been given a few opportunities throughout my career that have led me here um, but I definitely have always seen the game the game through kind of a coach's lens um, definitely through an offensive coach's lens. So obviously I hire uh, some good defensive coaches as staff. Um, but you know, I think just being around the game, you don't want to step away and you can't play forever. Back when I was playing, there wasn't really, it, WNBA had just started um, and the professional leagues were really just getting started. So, you know, your opportunity was to stay in coaching or go into athletic training or be a referee, you know, and, and I chose to coach that. When you look to kind of back, you know, being in Haver, you know, as a player, like, could you ever imagine you'd be a head coach at a Division One program? Um, back then, no, I, I couldn't imagine what I was going to be doing the next day. But um, you know, I, I think it's just really cool to look back and um, you know, all, all those days in in the high school at Haver, um, putting in that time has really created a huge opportunity for me. And all those people up there, I mean, Coach Murphy up there at, at, in Haver, and everyone that had just supported me through my career, um, really led me to this place. 
when you look to at uh, kind of look back at, at your five-year career, where do you th feel like maybe you've grown the most as a head coach? You know, I think being a, a head coach in Division Three, the seven years prior to being at NAU, I, I feel like I was really able to figure out what I wanted to be as a coach, what kind of systems I wanted to run. Um, so I, I was able to work through some of that stuff early on in, in my head coaching career. So when I took the job at NAU, um, it was really the adjustment of, you know, we had had such a successful program at Puget Sound that um, really trying to go into a program that hadn't had success and really figure out how to change the culture and just really get the kids in there that knew how to win um, and had an expectation to win. And I think that was probably the biggest challenge was just um, coming from a program where, where our kids and our leaders knew what being at the top was and when I got to NAU none of those kids had experienced what being at the top was even like. You kind of touched on it too just uh, you know the Cat Grizz games you know when you're gonna come back up to Montana you know what, what were those experiences like and do you remember the first time like was it weird when you were coming back to Montana to, to coach oh, yeah. NAU? Yeah the first time was weird I mean I had been back I think to University of Montana as an assistant when I was at University of Portland um, you know but it, it's exciting I mean you see a lot of familiar faces sometimes you don't recognize those faces and you're like oh it's been like 15 years since I've seen you but you know, it's just, it's great. I mean, the people in Montana are, are so phenomenal, um, so supportive. So it's it's just great to be able to go back there in that environment and just reconnect with people. Obviously, you know, the, the business at hand this week is the Big Sky Tournament, but for, for your program, like, do you feel like you've kind of checked some of these boxes when you came in as a coach, like, you know, to grow it and, you know, see the improvement? Like, do you feel like, uh, when you look back at it, do you feel like you've achieved some of those and that there's still some things to accomplish going forward? Yeah, definitely a lot to accomplish. You know, obviously we played in a, a semifinal two years ago. Um, but we have not played in a final yet. And so I, I think obviously we're taking one game at a time. Um, it's great to be able to get the bye. You know, we're facing one of the best teams in the conference um, tomorrow in University of Montana. So we have our work cut out for us and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to put together a strong 40 minutes and advance uh, the semifinals.